Hello and welcome to the channel. Over a year ago I was looking into upgrading my laptop to get some more life out of it, particularly when it came to playing video games. After the obvious upgrades like memory and storage, I started looking into ways to improve the graphics power. Around this time, a friend of mine who plays with a lot of PC hardware pointed me to the DIY external graphics card community, and specifically the EXP GDC Beast adapter you can find on eBay. This is a board that allows a full-size expansion card slot to be adapted to the mini versions that laptops often have, but are usually reserved for Wi-Fi use. In my case, my laptop has a mini PCI Express slot, but there are Express Card and M.2 slot versions of the adapter available as well. So after doing research to confirm that the adapter would work with my laptop, I went ahead and got one. And you can see the box of it here. In the box you get a few power adapter cables and the main data cable itself. On one end you've got mini PCI Express, that being this, and on the other you've got a connection that looks a lot like HDMI. The reason for that is because physically it is, but communication wise it isn't. The graphics card I ended up using with the adapter was this, GTX 1060, the 6GB model. As you may have been able to spot from the picture, there is nothing on the beast that attaches the graphics card by the rear backplate, meaning that it is purely attached by the expansion slot. This isn't ideal, because it means that the graphics card will flop round a bit, and also means that it's not great for transport. So this seemed like a perfect opportunity for 3D printing, as around the time I'd purchased my Prusa Mark IIs 3D printer. I went around designing my own enclosure, and specifically tailored for this graphics card, and after several iterations over many months, I ended up with this result. The main features of this enclosure are its sturdy attachment of the graphics card by its backplate, access to the three main connections of the EXP beast, that being power, USB, and the data, a front USB charging port for connection to various peripherals I have with my gaming setup, a power override switch, oh and there's RGB with the control interface on the front and a rear port to connect to external strips. Now you may be wondering why the USB hub at the front doesn't also do data. Well it turns out that even though the XP Beast has a USB port as I mentioned that only gets connected up if you have the express card version of the adapter cable and not the mini PCI Express version I had. I did attempt to wire up the USB connections on my mini PCI Express connector as you can see here and I did have some success with this but unfortunately the other connections on the cable which you can kind of see started failing forcing me to buy the new cable I showed at the beginning so you may be wondering, if I was working on this project a year ago, why am I showing it to you now? Well, I'm going to a gaming event this weekend, so now seems like a perfect opportunity to show off this enclosure, as well as take you through the setup process to get it working. So let's get to that then. To install the graphics card in this enclosure, I first need to remove the two side panels. And you can see here we've got the first RGB strip, so we need to unplug the cable for that. So here you can see the EXP Beast more clearly. Next we need to remove the mounting screw for the graphics card, back here. Also at this point I need to remove the front panel or at least loosen it in order to get the graphics card in. So you need to make sure that the card is aligned with the PCI Express slot and also the looks on the back here. So you see at the moment it's struggling. There it is. 
Now to securely fasten it up again and to attach the power. Now we can screw the front panel back in. Now let's just put one of the side panels on before we test everything. And we want to make sure that the power cables for the graphics card don't get pinched as we put this in. So that's looking pretty good. So now is a good time to test it's all working by connecting the power to the EXP beast. The power supply I'm using is the Dell DA2, which is a 220 watt brick that was originally used for their Optiplex machines. It turns out really convenient for this as it uses an 8 pin power connector. So let me plug it in that, and turn it on. Success! Graphics card is on and spinning and the RGB lights are doing their thing. So let's turn it off now and finish the assembly. And just a quick test again. And there we go. With the graphics card installed in the enclosure, I now need to modify my laptop to add the Beast data cable. I do this by removing its bottom panel, giving me access to the Wi-Fi card slot. Normally, you can only get access to the antenna connections here, not the card itself. So I had to take the entire bottom panel off in order to do this cutout that you see. So I just need to remove the Wi-Fi antennas and then I can get access to the card. And you can see that the slot is just under there. Installing the Beast cable is the reverse process of the Wi-Fi card. To have the cable come out of the bottom of the laptop, I brought a second bottom panel and added a cutout to it. As you can see, the cutout is a bit larger than necessary for this cable, but that's because this, that was done for the first cable I had. Right, so now all I need to do is a few things on the software side, and then I can plug this end of the cable into the graphics card enclosure and get gaming. For the external graphics card to work, I need to disable the laptop's built-in graphics first allowing the card to drive the laptop's display. If I didn't want to use the laptop's display and instead wanted to use an external display, then I could skip this step. If I go to Device Manager, you can see that the laptop has two display adapters. The first is the Intel integrated graphics built into the processor, and the second is the NVIDIA dedicated graphics that's used when playing more demanding games. It is the latter that needs to be disabled. Depending on your laptop's make and model, disabling this graphics may be quite a challenge. This is where software tools such as DIY eGPU setup come in handy. In the case of my laptop, I am fortunate in that I only need to disable the parent device of the dedicated graphics. To do that, I go to View Devices by Connection, find the dedicated graphics down here, and you can see that the parent is this Xeon device here. I disable this like so, and accept this warning message. See the screen flicker momentarily. And if I go back to the normal view, now there is only one display adapter shown. This means that I can now shut the laptop down and connect up the enclosure. So I've just plugged the graphics card in and now I want to show you the boot up sequence. And you notice there it's turned off. Now the reason for that is because there's a notable hardware change, so the BIOS needs to reconfigure a few things. But you see, now it's booting fine. 
Back in Device Manager, you can see that the GTX 1060 is now shown, and there are no driver warnings. This is a good sign, but to confirm that the card is able to drive the laptop's display, I like to run a graphics benchmarking program called Fermark. Opening up Fermark, we're greeted with this menu. As you can see, there are several preset options. For this setup, I run the 720p version, as higher resolutions require more bandwidth than this external graphics card setup allows, leading to low frame rates. So if I click on the preset, we get this warning message, and accepting that, we are greeted with this fuzzy donut. And already you can see that the external graphics card is working, showing us frame rates around the 100 mark. So the test is now completed and we get a score over 6000. To put that into perspective, the laptop normally only gets a score around the 600 mark. Now let's try out a game. My go-to game for this is Doom 2016. This is a game that barely even runs on the laptop at minimum setting, whereas with the use of the external graphics card I'm able to hit 60 frames per second at 720p on ultra settings. I've also hooked up my mini monitor to show off performance statistics whilst I'm playing. I should point out that this is a violent game, so if that makes you uncomfortable you may wish to skip ahead to the timestamp on screen now. Right, so let's get started. So having used this setup over the past year, what are my thoughts? Well overall pretty positive. Beyond the hardware challenges involved in adding the cutout to the bottom of the laptop and the issues I had with the original cable, I've not had any major problems with it. There have been the odd driver crashes, but that seems to be more dependent on the particular game I tried to run than the actual setup itself. Also, I'm fortunate that the graphics card I'm using is one of the early 10 series cards, meaning that the driver setup was much simpler than it now is. So overall, doing this modification achieved the goal of extending the usable gaming life of my laptop. If you have a similar era laptop and have been looking into this, perhaps it's worth giving a try. I should point out that there's no guarantee that it will work or even that your experience would be as simple as mine, but if anything, it's a fun project. And if you do decide to give it a go, and are interested in an enclosure, I have the Thingiverse links for my design down in the description below, as well as the mini monitor I was using earlier. Right, I hope you found my experience with this eGPU setup informative. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave a comment, and if you like the content I'm doing, consider subscribing to be updated on my future projects. Thank you for watching.